Hello everyone and welcome to my top 10 lists for making your hard earned old school runescape money stretch even further. There are a lot of different items, armors, and weapons in old school runescape that fill a wide variety of gaps and niches alongside general purpose usage. In this video, we're gonna cover 10 popular items that you should avoid buying because they are money sinks and pitfalls for newer players. Before we actually get into the items themselves, I wanna preface this video in that I will be talking a lot about different gear stat bonuses and their effect on max hits. I wanted to take a second to describe why max hits are so important. And if you're familiar with RuneScape Combat, you'll know that we always prioritize strength bonus over accuracy bonus because it gives a potential new max hit. Max hits are big over the course of several hundred or thousand attacks because your average damage will increase due to be being able to hit higher rolls. But it also helps to make lower hits less likely to roll by introducing a higher number of variations in the rolls themselves. For example, if you max hit a three, you can roll between zero and three on any given hit, of which all are small amounts of damage. But if you gain a couple of max hits, not only do you have a chance to roll a nine or a 10, but when nine and tens do roll, you aren't rolling threes and fours. Hopefully that makes sense, but essentially most future events are likely to balance out any past deviation from our presumed average. Higher max hits equal higher damage, equal faster kills, equal less supplies used. So starting off our list with number one, we have the classic Pegasian boots. Pegasian boots are a literal money sink because they only give a plus five range attack bonus over the next best alternative for a hefty 40 mil price tag. That's eight mil per ranged attack bonus. The Pegasian boots don't actually give any strength bonus over the God Dehyde boots, and they lose the plus one prayer bonus uh, that, they're, that their alternative has. You won't ever gain a max hit from Pegasians alone, and the accuracy difference will be barely noticeable in general PVM and Slayer. If you're curious why Pegasians are so expensive, there are two primary reasons. The first is because they are best in slot. Anything that's best in slot is always gonna have a hefty price tag because there are always gonna be a demand from rich players who simply want the best at any cost, regardless of value. Second, Pegasians are made by combining a Pegasian crystal from Cerberus and Ranger Boots. Pegasian crystals are dirt cheap because Cerberus is a heavily farmed Slayer boss, while Ranger Boots only come from medium clue score rewards. Since farming clues is not as straightforward as killing a single boss, there's going to be a higher supply of crystals than boots in the game. When there's such a disparity between the supply of complementary goods in an economy, one will be much more costly than the other. Thus, Pegasian Boots are 40 mil. You're better off saving your money and keeping your God Dehyde boots for the cheap price of around 500K. The next item we're gonna be talking about is the Bandos Chestplate. You may wonder why this item is on the list since it looks so cool and everyone and their mother wears one for the general training and bossing. However, the Bandos Chestplate really isn't a great value item in RuneScape because it has a virtually free substitute. In economics, a substitute good is an item which has a very similar or essentially the same value as any other product. In RuneScape's case, the Fighter Torso from the Barbarian Assault minigame fits this niche. Both the Fighter Torso and the Bandos Chestplate share the exact same strength bonus. And like we discussed before, strength bonus are far more valuable than defensive bonuses. Since there's an affordable substitute, you should be getting a Fighter Torso and saving the BCP purchase until you have plenty of cash to spare. Trust me, it's gonna be worth it. Armadillo Armor is the next item on our Do Not Buy list. I'm advocating against Armadillo Armor because of its lackluster stat bonuses compared to its next best alternative, Blessed Dehyde. The Armadillo chest and legs give a plus 33 and plus 20 ranged accuracy boost with no ranged strength bonus, while the Blessed Dehyde has a plus 30 and plus 17 bonus, respectively. Armadillo Armor only gives a slight accuracy buff for a massive cost of 63 mil. The real value in Armadal Armor is breaking it down into components to fortify Masori. If I were you, I would skip Armadal, grind some Tombs of Masket, and jump right from that Blessed Dehyde to Masori to see a nice bump in DPS because of the ranged strength bonus that the Masori Armor gives. Your next best alternative to Armadal only costs one to two mil for the full set, which is a bargain deal, and you'll get extremely close in terms of DPS for just a fraction of the cost. 
Eternal Boots are made from an Eternal Crystal and Infinity Boots and provide a plus eight magic attack bonus and plus zero magic damage bonus. Like other combat styles, gear that doesn't improve our strength and our respective combat style isn't nearly as valuable. Eternal Boots are only two mil and are technically part of a max mage setup in RuneScape. However, they have very little effect on your overall DPS and are better replaced by boots from another combat style. You can save GP, an inventory slot, and a gear switch by opting to not purchase these boots. That being said, with the recent release of the Phantom Muspa, um, I have been using Eternal Boots to buff my mage accuracy in order to catch freezes on this particular boss who has a high magic defense level. Um, other than that, I think these Eternal Boots are pretty much a complete waste of money. Our next item is the Dragon Crossbow. I'm advocating for skipping out on a Dragon Crossbow purchase even though it's relatively cheap because of its, because of its lackluster ranged attack bonuses over the Rune Crossbow. The Dragon Crossbow is 1.7 mil and gives a plus four range attack bonus over the Rune Crossbow. The accuracy bonus is really negligible in most encounters unless the boss you are fighting has absurdly high defenses. The Dragon Crossbow is in a really weird place right now because the Rune Crossbow is a dirt cheap early game range weapon, which functions well against a lot of the mid-level bosses, including Galvec from Dragon Slayer 2 Quest. Players tend to move directly from the Rune Crossbow and Magic Shortbow into the Toxic Blowpipe for low defense mobs and the Bow of Farron Dinan for higher defense mobs. And the attack speed and DPS of the Dragon Crossbow is just too slow to fit into a niche that the Bofa and Blowpipe doesn't already cover. In my mind, you would get more value out of upgrading directly to the Toxic Blowpipe or saving up for a Dragon Hunter Crossbow. Now, although the Dragon Hunter Crossbow is a hefty 65 mil purchase, you can derive a lot of utility and make tons of money with it by farming monsters like Vorkath, Brutal Black Dragons, the KBD, and using it at the Chambers of Zarek, specifically in the Ulm fight. The next item on our list is the Avernic Defender Hilt. This is an item that directly complements the Dragon Defender and upgrades its melee stat bonuses, a plus two melee strength boost, and a plus five stab slash and crush bonus. The Avernic Defender Hilt is the most common unique from the Theater of Blood, and I realize this is probably going to be a controversial item on this list because it is a direct upgrade and can, can potentially have a new max hit depending on your setup. However, I chose to include it for two specific reasons. One, the Avernic Defender sits at 87 mil currently, and that's probably primarily due to the Tombs of Masket. TOA drew a lot of the high-level PBM community away from the Theater of Blood because the prices of virtually any TOA item was in the hundreds of mills throughout the first week or so after release. Even now, TOA is even more profitable than the Theater of Blood considering how the Scythe is sitting around 350 mil while Masori is 320 mil just in itself. And the Shadow is in the billions. Now that TOA items are added to the Grand Exchange item sync, I speculate that the value of common drops from the Lightbearer and Uzmumpton's Uzma Fang will have a small increase in value, making TOA even more profitable. What I'm trying to say is there's a much smaller supply of Avernic Defenders now, and it's driven up the price considerably now that it outweighs its benefit until the late game when you have the cash to burn. The second reason the Avernic Defender is on this list is that once you buy it, you can't get your money back. Combining the hilt with the Dragon Defender is a permanent process which consumes the hilt and makes the Defender untradeable, even though Defenders themselves are untradeable anyway. This is a pretty big for accounts that like to grind specific bosses for a long time and will sell other gear to afford best in slot for what they are currently doing. Just know that the Avernic is an expensive, permanent upgrade that may not even give you a new max hit. Up next, we have the Seer's Ring. This ring is dropped by Dagonoth Prime, one of the three Dagonoth Kings. Even though the ring is only 350k, there are a lot better ways you can spend that money. Even investing it into runes to get an extra magic level would be much more beneficial than wearing the ring itself. Options like the Library and the Ring of Suffering provide a lot more value in pretty much every PBM scenario, even though their cost is significantly higher. Spending money on a Suffering or Library is one instance where money spent will actually net you a lot of value. The Seer's Ring is made even more useless by the fact that your magical accuracy also doesn't scale very well with your magic level or even your gear. This is because the magic accuracy formula has a component that is tied to your opponent's magic level. Magic level is a single number for both magic offense and defense. In other words, your ability to use magic is often more limited by the type of monster you fight rather than the gear that you have. 
Most of the cases you do use magic, it's either because the monster has literally no magic defense or because the monster has some trait that makes melee or range unviable. If it's too long or you don't want to read, essentially magic accuracy doesn't matter for monsters you would use magic on. Since we're on the topic of rings, the Archer's Ring is another noob trap. It's 4 mil, a rare drop by Dagonoth Supreme, and not worth your time or money. Like most of the other items on this list, the Archer's Ring doesn't give a range strength bonus, and the defensive bonuses of the Ring of Suffering generally have a more desirable effect in most circumstances. Take God Wars for example. The best way to solo every God Wars boss is using range. So a new player may think that the Archer's Ring would be the best ring for the task. However, if one considers the minions constantly attacking you, then the recoil and defense of the suffering or the spec regeneration in the light bearer makes more sense from a trip longevity perspective. The Dragon Plate Body is such a classic runescape item, and it aligns well with the natural progression of the standard metallic armors, i.e. iron, steel, mithril, adamant, rune, etc. I think a lot of new players see the Dragon Plate Body, see its relatively attainable price of 2.4 mil, and immediately think it's the next upgrade they need to make. I'm here to tell you that there are better and cheaper alternatives, including the Fighter Torso, Bearer's Armor, or even Obsidian Armor. The last item on the list isn't really an item, but more of a cautionary economic move that you can use to protect your GP and bank value. It may seem obvious, but don't buy the weapons that armor that come out the day, week, or in some cases, month of the release. They may be strong and sometimes even overpowered, but because of the limited supply in the game and the high demand for new items, prices will be drastically inflated. If you want the most value for your GP, you should be waiting until the price is stabilized for at least a week or two before diving in and making a purchase. I can't tell you how many times I heard, I bought the Fang for 300 mil and now it's 60 mil. Save your money until prices stabilize. I promise you it's worth the wait. Well, that's all for our top 10 items to avoid buying in old school RuneScape. Remember that some of these items like the Bandos Chestplate and Avernic Defender are really powerful items and upgrades, so don't completely ignore them. This video is just meant to inform people from a value perspective that they are quite costly for the value that they provide. If you have the money and are ready for the upgrade, then absolutely go for it. Hopefully you learned something new or found this content valuable in some way, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.